Today's lesson uh, 1.3 is on combining transformations. So in 1.1 and 1.2 uh, we've done a bunch of transformations. We've done translations which is left and right shifts and up and down shifts and then we did uh, in 1.2 we did reflections and stretches. So now we're going to be putting those all together. So let's start off with this with this graph that we're fairly familiar with. In function notation we're going to just call this y is equal to f of x and then we're going to play around with y equals f of x. Now it happens to be the case that this is also y is equal to x squared. So this way of writing it uh, using a function is using some function notation. Uh, and so um, even though it happens to be y is equal to x squared, we're going to talk about this and just call it y is equal to f of x. Now, the next part down here says sketch the graph of y is equal to negative 2 x minus 1 all squared plus 3. And you can see what happens to the graph. Okay, so uh, first of all, notice that the scale, I think, is pretty similar. The jump between 0 and 1 and the jump between 0 and 1, perhaps it got a little bit smaller here, but it, it's fairly close. Uh, so any kind of a changes between these two graphs are happening because we're going from y is equal to x squared to all this kind of stuff. So what changes took place? Well, first of all, this is opening upwards and then this one is opening downwards. So when we flip from opening upwards to opening downwards like that, that is a um, reflection on the x-axis. So again, if you think of this would be a, you know, along the x-axis, if you were to place a mirror and reflect it, uh, you know, original the first thing would happen is you'd see a reflection that would make it look like that. So we, we haven't turned this totally into that yet. All we've done is done a reflection so far. So in our list of transformations, we're going to say, we're going to reflect. We're going to have a reflection. We'll zoom in a bit. A reflection. Now I usually use the word over. I noticed that the uh, textbook uh, will use the word on the x-axis. And if you recall from our previous lessons, that's because of this negative right here. That negative out there uh, causes a reflection over the x-axis. Now the, the next thing that we can take a look at is the fact that it looks like the graph gets skinnier, doesn't it? So here it's kind of fat, here it gets a little skinnier, uh, and that could be from one of two things. It it could be from a, a horizontal compression where it kind of gets pushed in sideways like that. And now in this case you can think of it as a horizontal compression but also at the same time if you would uh, look at this graph and say if I stretched it vertically if I stretch this, or I guess if I take this original one, if I take this original one here and I stretch it vertically uh, it's going to go from being kind of fat uh, when I stretch it vertically, when I when I take this part and I stretch it this way, it's going to end up looking more thin like that. So we actually, the second one we have is a vertical stretch. And the part where the vertical stretch comes from, uh, I erase my, my previous circle here, the part that the vertical stretch comes from is this 2 here. Okay, so it's a vertical stretch uh, by a factor of 2. Now this phrase, a factor of 2, really what, what that means is it's being multiplied by 2. So a factor is something that multiplies. So um, a vertical stretch means that my y values are being multiplied by 2. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we've reflected it and then we've stretched it which would kind of make it look like this but now the other thing is it's moved hasn't it it's kind of shifted over and so instead of being at the origin where the vertex is originally it's shifted one to the right and three up so I'll put this over here we're gonna have a translation it's moved to the right one and it's gone up three so where has that part happened? Here is this minus 1 is our right 1 and here is our up 3.
Okay, so those are our trans transformations. Uh, this function can also be represented. Now, if I go and I, and I say, okay, if I had y is equal to f of x is my original function, what does it look like when I do all these things here? So a reflection over the x-axis, that's going to be my negative. The vertical stretch by a factor of 2, that will be my 2 out front here. That's my a value, will be negative 2. And then f of, if I'm going right 1, x minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so putting that all together, you can, in function notation, if this was my original function, that looked like this. If this was my y is equal to f of x, this is what it looks like. And I guess I just start, I'm kind of redrawing this. That's what it looks like after I've done all those uh, equations. And just as a reminder then, we would say that this has an a value of negative 2. Uh, now there's no b right over there. That's where the b would be. So we'll just say b is equal to 1. Uh, oh, I put an h here instead of saying um, minus 1 here. I'll fix this. So this should be minus 1. So my h value is equal to 1 and my k value is equal to 3. Okay, so just as a reminder, looking on this, this is the, the format here. So you remember that my h, it's x minus h. So here, if this is a minus 1, my h is a 1. So you look for whatever is here, and your h value is going to be equal to the opposite of that. So if that's negative 1, it's 1. If this was a positive value, this would be negative. Okay, so order is very important. So I'm just going to remind ourselves what each of these values do. Um, when you do these transformations, you want to do the A and the B ones first. It's kind of nice to remember that uh, A and B uh, come first in the alphabet. And they should be first in the order of the transformations. So take care of those ones first. Well, what do they do? So if you recall, that A is responsible for two things. First of all, uh, if A is negative, then what happens? My Y values are multiplied by negative 1, which cause uh, reflection over the X axis. Okay, uh, now the other one is that the a value, uh, that the y values are multiplied by a, and this will cause a vertical stretch. Now, specifically, when I'm talking about a vertical stretch, if, if it's being multiplied by a number which is less than 1, so if, a is, uh, if the absolute value of a is less than 1, so between uh, negative 1 and positive 1, it will actually be a, a compression. So sometimes you'll see the word stretch, and stretch can mean it's getting a larger. So if I had you know, some, uh, some type of a graph, and if I'm stretching it, if I'm kind of imagining myself pulling on that piece of paper, so it's causing, say, the parabola to get more stretched vertically like that, uh, my a value might be greater than 1. If the a value is less than 1, sometimes instead of the using the word stretch, we use the word compression, which means it's getting smaller. Uh, now for the b values, uh, this is just a reminder from earlier on, the, uh, x, the x values are multiplied by 1 over b. Okay, and same idea of the two things. If if b is negative, it's going to be reflection, but this time it'll be reflection over the y-axis, and the y values are multiplied by one over b, so it can cause a horizontal stretch. So 
So I didn't write the reflection part, but really when you think about the fact that the y values are being multiplied by a, if they're being multiplied by a negative, that's a reflection. The x values are being multiplied by 1 over b, uh, or the reciprocal of b is another way of saying it. So if it's a negative, then it will be a reflection, in this case, over the y-axis. And then after you're done that, so I will say in here, last, I'll find a place to put it here, last, uh, we would go uh, h units right and k units up. Okay, so if h is positive, we go right. If h is negative, we go left. If k is positive, we go up. If k is negative, we go left. Okay, well, let's try this one here. Example number two. And I'll give you a hint that our, uh, the mastery check uh, is a lot of these type of questions that we're doing right now. So if we're starting with y is equal to f of x, now this isn't x squared. This is just uh, really defined by these three different, or four different points and the lines drawn between them. Sketch the following graphs. Okay, so on each of these graphs, in a dashed line is the original one. So that's just sort of to help us make these things. So what are the two things that are happening? Well, a is going to be equal to 2. So um, we want to do the A value and the B values first, like I said before. That's going to cause a vertical stretch of 2. So all the Y values are going to get be, be multiplied by 2. So let's take care of that one first. So this one here, instead of having a Y value of negative 1, it'll get doubled. So it got stretched to there. Here's my next important point. That one's going to get stretched. It's going to get multiplied by 2. So instead of the Y value being negative 1, it'll be negative 2. Uh, over here, that's our next important point. The y value is 1, it's going to get doubled to 2, and this one will stay the same because it's 0. So after my first, my first transformation, that's what it looks like after my stretch. Okay, now switching to a different color. My next value here, this minus 1, that is a k value is equal to negative 1, and that is going to cause everything to go down 1. So my second thing I'm going to do is, starting from my green line, I'm just going to be going down 1. And I'll take each of the, the four dots, I'll draw them, and then I'll connect them. Okay. Now if this was a uh, for a test, uh, what I would like you to do is draw this in pencil, and then when you're done, any kind of halfway points that you did, you should be erasing. So this green one here, when you're done, you should erase it, okay? So that it's very clear what your answer is, because if you have two lines in there, it might not be clear what your answer is. Okay, so let's try our next question here. So um, there's two things here. We have now an A value of negative 1, and that's going to cause a reflection. So our y values are going to get multiplied by negative 1. So here my y value is negative 1 is going to get reflected and get put over here. Here my y value is negative 1, it'll get reflected over there. Here my y is positive 1, it'll get reflected and put over there, and this one will stay the same. So after my reflection, Here's what my line looks like, okay? Now my next thing here is I have an h value. What's the h? If it's x minus 2, remember you take this minus 2, and we say it's the opposite of that, so h is 2. That causes things to go left and right, so I want to go left 2 at this point. So I'll switch to blue, and I'm going to go left 2. So starting at this point, I'm going left 2 over there. This point here, left 2, right there. This point, left 2, right here this point left to and I go there so my line ends up looking like that okay perhaps it'll be a little bit harder for me to erase Let's see how it goes here okay there we go so that's my final line I could probably use a ruler to make that look a little bit better all right, so you get a sense of, of how we can do multiple transformations at the same time looking at C on the next page um, this isn't quite in the right uh, format. So if you recall, we want the format, if I write, rewrite this over again, we get y is equal to a times f of b of x minus h 
plus k. Now this might be a little bit of a of a you know long thing to remember at this point, but you'll get used to it. Now the point is that this b is factored factored out. It's b multiplied by all of x minus h. Uh, so you you want to have a parenthesis there. So what I need to do is factor out the 2. So what does it look like when I factor out the 2? This is going to look like uh, y is equal to f of, and if I factor out the 2 first and put the left parentheses, now I get x plus, now what do I put put right there? Is it a 1 or a 2? If you said 1, you were doing excellent. So I'm going to put like that. Now I have to have the same number of brackets, so I'll put 2 there. So mathematically, this is the same as that. This is easier for us to do the transformations because now when I look at it, I say, okay, this is my b value. My b is going to be equal to 2, and switching to a different color, my h is going to be equal to, remember, it's the opposite of that. Instead of plus 1, it's going to be minus 1. So what does this mean? Well, again, we're going to do my our a and b transformations first. Uh, my, b is something that's inside of this function, okay, things that are inside of that uh, function, those change my x values. So uh, b and h change my x values. Things that are outside of the function change my y values. So b is going to be multiplying your x values are going to get multiplied by 1 over b. So in this case it's going to get multiplied by 1 half. Okay, so let's do that first. Let's look at these, again, these four spots, and we'll take our x values and we're going to multiply them by a half. So here is a negative 2. If I multiply that times a half, I'm going to get negative 1. So notice that my, oh, I should probably do a green. I'll just stick with the blue. Uh, notice that my, my y values stay the same, but my x, all I'm doing is multiplying all my x values times a half. So this one gets turned into there. This one stays the same because my x value is 0, and 0 times a half is still 0. This one here has an x value of 2, so 2 times a half is 1. And over here, this has an x value of 3, so that turns into 1 and a half. So what does this look like? It looks like Okay, so you see how that, oh, and in fact I was using green, you see how that um, causes the horizontal compression, right? It's multiplying all my x values by half. When I multiply by something less than 1, I'm getting a compression. It's, it's kind of pushing it in this way, right? That's what the horizontal compression looks like. Now the second thing we need to do, and I'll, now I'll switch color maybe to blue for this one, is my h is uh, equal to negative 1, so that means I need to go left one. So looking at each of these dots, I'm going to go left one. So this one will go here, uh, this one will go here, that one is going to go over there, and this one will go instead of one and a half, it'll go to half. So it'll go like this, and then up there, and then back down over there. So my blue one will be my final answer, so I'll erase my green one. That kind of even worked. And so there's my final answer in blue. So that is my y is equal to f of 2 times x plus 1. All right. All right, our last example here is part d. Uh, I'll just erase some of my mess here so I can work on it a bit better. Uh, let's analyze this. It seems to me that if I look at it in terms of a, b, h, and k, there, there's no a here, so the a is equal to 1. It's not going to be making any difference. My b value, oops, my b value is going to be equal to a negative 1. Uh, I don't have any h, and my k value is equal to plus 1. So my b value is going to be multiplying all the x values by negative 1, so I'm going to have a uh, reflection. When I multiply the x values by negative 1, I have a reflection over the y-axis. So looking at these points, uh, this one, when it gets reflected, is going to go over here. This spot here, because it's on the y-axis and it's reflected, it doesn't actually change. This spot over here, when it gets reflected, will be over here, and this spot will be over there. So now I get a line that looks like there. That's what it looks like after the reflection. So that's the first bit. Now I need to do my k plus 1. So k means I'm going to go up 1. 
So from here, I'm going to go up one. So each of my points goes up one. And there is my final answer. So I'll erase my old one. So I just have the one part on my screen at once. Uh, it says, for part E, it says, describe the order of the transformations that are required to transform the graph of this into that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say, well, my A value, oops, my A value is going to be equal to negative 3. My B value Oh, well, now I have to be careful. It looks like I need to factor out a negative 1. So if you recall, when we did this last time, see we had this 2x, and I said, well, we need to have a parentheses there. So we're going to have, we've factored out the 2. So here, we need to actually factor out a negative 1. So I'll rewrite this, and I'm going to write this as y is equal to negative 3 f of, now in the bracket I'll put negative, so my, that's my negative 1 I'm factoring out, x, now this becomes a minus 1, plus 4. Okay, so my b value is a negative 1, my h value is going to be the opposite of that, so instead of negative 1 it'll be positive 1, and my k value will be plus 4. Okay, so what are all the different things I need to do? Well, so first of all, the fact that a is negative means that all my y values will be multiplied by a negative one, which causes a reflection. So the first one I can say is a reflection over the x-axis. All right, and this is because a is negative. All right, uh, and now it doesn't matter the order here. I can do the fact that my uh, a is three, so that I'll be multiplying. I'll do. I uh, maybe I'll do that one next. Uh, we'll do multiply my y values times three, which is another way. Another way of saying it is a vertical stretch. by a factor of 3. Just barely fit that one in there. So I've taken care of this piece and I've taken care of this piece. Now let's go over to B and the fact that B is negative 1. So that's going to cause a reflection again. But this time it'll be a reflection over the y-axis. Oh, looking back over here, all I said for number one is reflection over the axis. This should be reflection over the x-axis. Let's make this a bit better here. Um, now my h, that means I'm going to be moving to the right one. And my k means I'm going to be moving up four. So here are all the things. Um, note the orders of 1, 2, and 3. You could do these in any order as long as they are done first and then your uh, translations, you're moving left or right or up and down, those should be done last. Okay, so take care of the things to do with A and B first. There is your homework and I will see you in class.